13 billion years ago, time, space and matter were born in the Big Bang. The universe slowly cooled down. Elementary particles were confined in neutrons and protons and they formed the first atoms. It was these atoms that combined to make the first chemical molecules. About three and a half billion years ago, a very special chemical molecule came into existence. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Our body consists of 100 trillion cells of about 220 different types. Most cells have so-called nucleus. The nucleus has some unusual components called chromosomes. For a long time people suspected that it was just the chromosomes that are responsible for inheritance. The chromosomes are built of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. For a long time, we wonder how this mysterious nucleic acid is built. We know that DNA consists of atoms of hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus. It was deduced that these atoms can form simple structures such as sugar called dioxyribose, phosphate residues and simple alkalis. But how can they transmit genetic information? At this point, Rosalind Franklin, a British scientist, made one of the most important X-ray photos of all time. It showed X-rays scattered from a DNA molecule. Her analysis of the photo allowed her to determine the distances between various atoms in the nucleic acid molecule. Based on her results, Francis Crick and James Watson, two physicists from Cambridge University, built a model of the DNA molecule and published their results in the journal Nature. For this outstanding discovery, they received the Nobel Prize. Sadly, Rosalind Franklin did not share it since she had died four years earlier and the prize cannot be given posthumously. So how did Creek and Watson imagine the construction of DNA? Here is a molecule of sugar called deoxyribose. Let's connect to it a molecule of phosphate group. We also need the same thing but turned upside down. Now we connect an alkali called cytosine. As we see, it is flat. And this second alkali, also flat, is called guanine. Let's look at this from the top. Cytosine connects to guanine with three hydrogen bonds. We can draw a connection for these alkalis in a much simpler way. This we used to call a pair of nucleotides.
Let's imagine that on this pair of nucleotides we put an next and the next. We will get such an unusual structure. This is like a twisted ladder whose rungs are two alkalis bound together. For one twist of this ladder there are ten rungs, the pairs of nucleotides. This ladder is circa two nanometers wide, which is two billionth parts of a meter, and the length DNA acid can be very, very long. It can reach about 2 meters. It is hard to imagine that such a long object can fit into nucleus of a cell. If we join together the DNA from all the cells in one human being, it would make a thread stretching to the sun and back 60 times. In our example of a DNA molecule, all the rungs consisted of the same alkalis, cytosine and guanine. In reality, other variants exist. In some rungs of our ladder, instead of cytosine, guanine, one can link two other alkalis, adenine and thymine. As you can see, these alkalis are linked not with three but with two hydrogen bonds. We also find the opposite combinations, the mirror reflections. Now cytosine is on the left, not on the right side. On the left we find its partner guanine. And here is a mirror version of the combination adenine-thymine. Now it is thymine adenine. Altogether, we have four possible variants of a single rank of the DNA ladder. From these combinations, our DNA is built, and each of us has their own personal individual set. This is how Crick and Watson explain how the DNA molecule is constructed. But how does such a structure carry our genetic information? Let's simplify the view of this fragment of DNA and let's show it as the ladder. Let's untwist it. Now it's possible to read it. As adenine is always linked with thymine and guanine always with cytosine, the lower row of letters results from the upper one. So we can neglect it. We obtain the series of letters sometimes called a genetic code. The genetic code for a human being is coded by more than 3 billion nucleotides. To write it on a paper, someone writing 60 characters per minute would need to write 8 hours a day for 50 years. Your genetic information written on a piece of paper would create a whole library. In 2003, Press agencies informed about reading out the entire genetic code of a man. As a matter of fact, we know this text, but we don't know what all of it means. 
How can the sequence of characters influence our lives? Let's talk about this. They say that the life is a mode of existence of protein bodies. Proteins are large molecules with a complex structure and are found in nature. They are the basis of biological life. Twenty percent of a human body is made of proteins. They are produced in cells of living organisms. Cells produce them from simpler substances called amino acids. There are 20 basic amino acids in nature and this set is common to all living things. In a simple picture, we could imagine a protein molecule as a nickel made of beads of amino acids. The cord of such a nickel would have over 1000 beads, molecules of amino acids. Different combinations create different kinds of proteins. They are needed in an organism for different purposes. Insulin is a protein which regulates the amount of sugar in the blood. Another protein is responsible for transporting the oxygen. Contraction of a muscle is an opposing movement of two kinds of proteins. Flexibility of the bone tissue is provided by collagen, which is also a component of ligaments, tendon and cartridge. A protein called keratin is needed for hair or nails. Antibodies are proteins which can recognize alien substances in the body and defend us against them. How do our bodies know how to produce these proteins? This information we inherited from our parents. How? Let's come back to our library. Crick and Watson explain how the DNA is built. They didn't explain how to read the code. This was explained by Marshall Warren Nirenberg. He grouped particular letters of a genetic code in triplets, called codons. He showed that certain triplets characterize particular amino acids. He created the table which assigned particular codons to related amino acids. Using this table, we can decode our fragment of genetic code. This is a recipe to build the protein with such structure that at first there is amino acid called glutamine, then amino acid called serine, next lysine, and so on. This information is kept in the nucleus of a cell in a chromosome which is built of DNA and it is handed on to its descendant cells. A fragment of DNA with a recipe for producing the whole protein or part of it is called a gene. Your genes determine not only the color of your eyes. In your DNA, there are also sections responsible for your talent for music or mathematics. Where are they? Unfortunately, this we cannot yet read from DNA.
So the recipe for creating necessary proteins is stored in your DNA. Even now, while you are watching this film, your body is constantly reading this information and producing the proteins needed for its proper running. Unfortunately, this information may be easily deformed or even destroyed. Quantum of radiation destroyed part of a helix of DNA. And here, even more severe damage. Damage to the DNA may result in the cell producing a defective protein. Now the system does not work properly and this may lead to a cancer. What threatens our DNA? It is not just natural radiation. DNA may be damaged by chemical substances present in our environment. For example, some substances present in air, water or even in soil. Viruses attacking us are damaging our DNA by reprogramming it to suit its purposes. In some professions, for example in the petrol industry, workers are particularly exposed to substances dangerous to the DNA. Even in food there can be harmful substances, for example when you use the same cooking oil many times. Which of these dangers are most severe? No, it's not radiation. In fact, the most serious effects come from the substances which we introduce into our bodies of our own free will. In our institute we research which and how environmental factors cause damage to our DNA. How does one observe such a damage? There are many ways, here we look at few of them. On the gel bedding we place single cells and with special chemicals we extract DNA from the nuclei. Then we make the electrophoresis. Simply speaking, we introduce an electrostatic field. After 30 minutes, we add a marker to our samples to color the DNA and we observe the sample under a microscope. Here we see what happened in the six selected samples. Due to the electrostatic field, damaged fragments of DNA move towards one of the electrodes. We obtained a shape like a comet. On the other hand, a sample without any damage of the DNA kept its circular shape. Measuring how much DNA is in the tail of a comet, we can determine the degree of damage to the DNA. Since chromosomes are built of DNA, we can also examine the damage by looking at the chromosomes. It is best to watch them when the cells prepare to fission, the process called mitosis. In the culture of cells using a special protein, we stimulate cells to enter the cellular cycle. We then place them in an incubator at a suitable temperature. At the proper moment, using another protein, we stop the fission of cells. When we add some color to the chromosomes, one can watch them using microscope. Here we see an example of chromosomes which have many abnormalities, which may indicate damage to the DNA. Such changes for us are so-called biomarkers, a kind of biological indicator. Biomarkers help us to estimate the damage of the DNA cells and also estimate the risk for a cancer to occur. In the laboratory we can damage the DNA by irradiating the culture of cells with ionizing radiation. This, for instance, allows us to research conditions which favor a process of repairing any damaged DNA. For DNA, even contains the information about the proteins need to repair DNA. 
Yes, this extraordinary molecule even has such a features as this. Among all creatures in the world, only humans ponder how and why they exist. In our institute, scientists penetrate with their minds not only the depths of the cosmos or penetrate the world of atomic nuclei. We also investigate the influence of our environment on our own DNA. We try to learn which of our activities are dangerous for our genetic information. In this way, somehow, we ask our first naive and simple questions about the secrets of human existence.